Martinez is already in prison serving 15 to life, but Orange County District Attorney Tony Rakak has just announced that he is now being charged with murder while behind bars for ordering the killing of a placentia man in 2017 that was captured on surveillance video. In fact, authorities played the surveillance video today. They say under Martinez's orders here, these armed members of the Mexican mafia went to Robert Rios's home to collect money and drugs, and you can see an altercation play out. Investigators say when Rios refused to pay. He was later shot right there in his front yard. Authorities say that Martinez also ordered another hit, but that victim survived his gunshot wounds. Now, there are eight defendants total in this case, and investigators admit that somehow Martinez has been able to make more than 3,000 communications from prison, whether it be messaging or through cell phones. The DA was asked if he's already behind bars, how do these new charges make the community any safer? We know how they're operating. Uh, we know uh, we know what they did. Uh, we got uh, uh, confiscated these uh, uh, these telephones. Got a great deal of information off the telephones. They understand now that uh, that we're able to do these kinds of investigations. The state, the uh, uh, the Department of Corrections understands uh, what's happening. And, uh, and our hope is that, uh, that this knowledge, well, certainly it'll disrupt uh, what they're doing. The district attorney says that he now hopes the Department of Corrections will put Martinez and others like him in better secure locations to try and prevent further communications with gang members on the outside. The official said that this is a crushing blow to the Orange County Mexican Mafia. Now we're told that the majority of the defendants you'll see are already in custody, but nine others were arrested between last night and this morning. Now FBI and local officials announced the federal indictment today and said this is the result of a years long investigation that is ongoing. A grand jury indictment charges 31 Orange County Mexican Mafia members and associates with alleged racketeering, murders, attempted murders, drug and gun charges. From 2016 to April 2022, Johnny Martinez, Robert Aguirre and Dennis Ortiz are accused of being the leaders of criminal activities in OC and within OC jails and prisons. Officials say some of the other defendants served as shot callers, mouthpieces, representatives and secretaries. Now, Officials say that the OC Mexican Mafia preyed on vulnerable communities using fear and violence, controlled the majority of street gangs throughout OC, and received quote unquote taxes paid by gangs to allow them to deal drugs in that area. Officials say they're connected to violent crimes, including murder. United States Attorney Tracy Wilkinson said many neighborhoods felt the impact of their destructive conduct, and this disrupts operations of the Mexican Mafia. Have we, you know, eradicated the Mexican mafia? The answer is no. Um, but this is a, a continuing investigation, and I think that the message that this case sends is that if you rise to power in that vacuum, we will come for you. When you're talking about prison gangs, and when you're talking about um, the, the the spread that they have, and certainly when you're talking about the Mexican mafia, they have reached far beyond Orange County uh, into not only the rest of the counties um, locally here in Southern California, but the rest of the United States. Today's indictment charges high-level officials in the Mexican Mafia. The indictment charges the Southern California gang leadership, in other words, those involved in using their power to organize and direct violent criminal activities committed by gangs throughout Southern California. Now, we're told that the defendants will be moved into federal custody and arraigned. Some of the charges can potentially carry a penalty, a maximum of life in prison. Live in Orange, Kimberly Chang, KTLA 5 News. Dozens of people arrested in a massive raid targeting the Mexican mafia. And right now, many of them are rounded up in a South El Monte Park. And that's where we sent CBS 2's Dave Lopez. And Dave, we understand that this raid was years in the making. We have been told, uh, Sharon, that this is about a four-year planning operation. They, they call this uh, Dirty Thirds. Now, the reason they call it Thirds is because it's centered on drug trafficking in the jail. And if you were not a member of the Mexican Mafia, I am told, you had to give either one-third of your drugs or one-third of your profits over to the Mexican Mafia, or else they'd take care of you. Behind me, they are wrapping up this area. I'm in Whittier Narrows, where they brought 29 of those that they took into custody. That's where they brought him here for processing. Now, uh, this morning, we have some aerials of, of what uh, the area looked like earlier. We had the FBI, 
sheriffs, DEA, Pomona police, and U.S. Marshals all converge on a number of different houses throughout Southern California, many of them, I'm told, in Pomona. Now, as a result of that early morning raid, they took in 29 uh, people into custody. They also raided the L.A. County Jail, where they took 43 inmates into custody, and they are now being taken out of the jail and into the federal uh, detention area, where they most of them will be charged with drug smuggling and also extortion. I've also been told, as you take a look at some of the ground stuff, uh, the ground shots that we have earlier, that one of the members of the Mexican Mafia who was in custody also will be charged with three counts of murder, ordering murder on the street, three hits, if you will. I'm also told that uh, the Mexican Mafia had such a stronghold on the uh, drug trafficking in the jail that they were able to tax people who weren't part of it, also uh, order uh, not hits but beat people up in the jail if they didn't cooperate, and they also controlled a lot of the drug trafficking out on the street. Also arrested were members of the Pomona gangs. I'm told there are four dozen different gangs involved in uh, in these arrests, all centered, most of centered in the Pomona area. Much more will be given to us at the uh, at a one o'clock briefing. Eighty-seven. Uh, People were on the list of the indictment. I am told they have all in custody with the exception of 11. So there are 11 fugitives. Again, this in the, in the making for almost Investigators say this all started when a cell phone was snuck into prison where the head of the Mexican mafia got a hold of it and he started ordering, at least investigators say, members of the Mexican mafia on the outside to kill. You're looking at grainy security tape of three men pointing rifles at a man on the ground in front of his placentia home. It was a January night of last year. You can see the victim tackle one of the gunmen. Moments later, they killed him. His murder remained a mystery until now. We know what they did. Uh, we got uh, uh, confiscated these uh, uh, these telephones got a great deal of information off the telephones. The Orange County District Attorney announced today that Johnny Martinez, whom they refer to as the head of the Mexican Mafia, ordered the Placentia man's murder while he was serving 15 years to life in prison. Unfortunately, putting these individuals in prison doesn't seem to stop them from committing crimes. With a cell phone and a notepad, they continue to manage their criminal enterprise. Investigators say Martinez ordered armed members of the Mexican Mafia to go to Robert Rios' home to collect money and drugs. When he refused to pay, police say they shot him in his front yard. Using a contraband cell phone in prison, investigators say Martinez made thousands of phone calls and ordered another hit last August, but that victim survived. Eight others were also charged today. Placentia police hope this sends a clear message. If you come to Placentia to do others harm, to you come to Placentia to gun other people down, no matter who you are, we will come after you. We will investigate that crime vigorously and not stop until you're brought to justice. Martinez and the eight others now face a slew of charges, including one murder charge each and also an attempted murder charge each. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Greenlit Gang TV. I uh, hope y'all having a good Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully you got some time off with the family, whether it's off of work or kids are out of school. Um, really appreciate you guys checking out my videos. Uh, I'm in sales, so I don't get no days off, but uh, love making these for you guys. Um, channel's been doing well. Uh, you know, my focus is um, just making good videos, good content. I will say this, though. I see creators that say, you know, I don't even look at the numbers. I just focus on making better videos. Yes, that's true. But I'm sorry. I look at my numbers. I want to know what I'm making. I want to know how many subs I've got, how many likes I've got. I'm just being truthful. I feel like a lot of people aren't being truthful when they say that. You know, these are some big-time YouTubers that I see in there. And I believe them because their videos are very, very high quality. Sure, sure, a whole lot better quality than mine, but... I just don't believe it when they say they don't pay attention to the numbers. I'm like, how can you not when they're right in front of your face? So I just, that was on my mind. But anyway, you guys are awesome. I think I got the best fans, the best group, the best people that follow me. Um, I got a big diverse, like I've said in my last video, white, Hispanic, black. Uh, we're almost at 6,000 subs. Love the comments, love the feedback. Um, and this is what I've always wanted to do. I thought about doing this for like two years, guys, and now I get to do it for you guys, and I get feedback, and I get good, bad, indifferent, whatever. I love it all. I love the conversations. So uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, an infamous 
uh, Mexican Mafia leader out of Orange County, Johnny Crow Martinez, uh, a reputed head of the Mexican, Mef- uh, Mexican Mafia in Orange County. Uh, he had been in prison since the early 90s on a – and this is kind of an interesting sentence. It was a 15-year-to-life sentence, and I guess uh, when I hear that – I mean obviously 15 years to life, but I kind of always assume that – and maybe you guys – and leave a comment down below. This is actually going to be the what I was going to ask you guys, and I wanted you to uh, truly get back to me. My understanding is 15 years to life means that 15 years – does that mean you come up for parole or does it – is it like an indeterminate where – Anywhere from 15 years to never, you can get out. I just, if you, if somebody knows the answer to that, or if somebody's been through that, or if any of you guys have had a sentence like this, or a family member, please uh, reach out to me. Comment down below, um, and if I have a good answer, like a true legit answer, I'll pin the, I'll pin the comment to the top. So, anyway, just was kind of wondering that uh, because it was like 94, 95, he got the sentence and. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is going into like 2020. So I just am like, you know, and I know if you commit crimes behind bars, which this gentleman was doing, um, I know you can get more, but I didn't read anything that said he was actually like, oh, in the year 2005, he picked up another murder charge or drug charge and he got another 30 years. I didn't see that. Um, he gets hit with a big case that we're going to be talking about, but I just guess kind of wondering that you know if he if he gets sentenced to 15 years to life in 94 95 does that mean in 2010 does he come up for some sort of parole or is it just hey at 15 years that's like your entry and then we'll let you know (laughs) so anyway comment below please um so johnny crow martinez head of the mexican mafia in orange county uh he picked up a lot of notoriety for what he was doing behind bars, which is a lot what a lot of these leaders um, do. And this is a good example of what we've talked about in other videos where, um, yes, there are bosses, there are shot callers, there are guys in the streets running things. But if you are part of the Mexican mafia or a, uh, a South Sider, a uh, Sereno gang or a gang that's affiliated, these kind of guys, these guys like Johnny Martinez are calling the shots. They are calling the shots. Um, it said – and to kind of give you a timeline of this, right? He was in prison obviously in the 90s. But this is going to be taking place around the later 2010s, okay, when his rise to power really takes place. Um, it said that he had a contraband cell phone and he had made thousands of phone calls, text messages, everything, everything. And I'm going to read from everything that I, I picked up on um, and just – it's a really interesting story and it shows you – the immense amount of power that these guys have and what he was able to do and how he is able to control everything. And I can tell right away the kind of guy Johnny Martinez is, if you, even if you're a friend, if you go against what he says or he feels any sort of disrespect, your life might be in danger. Your life might be in danger. Uh, you might be greenlit to be, uh, to be taken care of. So, um, so jumping right into it, Santa Ana, uh, we're going to be in the Santa Ana, the California region, Santa Ana over there in the California, uh, in the state of California, the reputed head of the Orange County Mexican Mafia, key leaders in the street gangs and multiple other associates were named in a federal racketeering indictment unsealed Wednesday. Um, and again, this is around April of 2022. So April 4th of 2022 is when this finally went down, but we're going to be backtracking a few years. So, um, again, I just want to give you a good timeline of this. This is only a few years old. That's why I picked this story. Um, the feds came out that alleges basically a serious racketeering indictment, which is what happens with a lot of these gangs. It's just, again, we're going to be talking about his involvement and the power he wielded from his cell. So the indictment comes down, like I said, early April 2022, alleges murder, attempted murder, drug dealing, weapons charges. The federal indictment also incorporated two cases uh, revolving around Johnny Martinez that have lingered, and this is what I'm talking about, that have lingered in the Orange County Superior Court 
for years, for years, Orange County Superior Court and these prosecutors, they'd been getting at Johnny Martinez for like seven to eight years and could not get him. Um, cases had gotten thrown out, cases were other cases, and these are, and I'm not talking, these are murder cases that were getting thrown out. Uh, one murder case was thrown out by a judge. Another was on the verge of dismissal because there was a new law, uh, that required more participation by a co-defendant, which means more basically snitching. And when you've got somebody in power like Johnny Martinez, who a lot of people were afraid of, it's going to be very hard to get that cooperation. And he's in a cell. Right, so he's not out. If somebody dies on the street, he didn't pull the trigger. Okay, as we're going to read about, obviously that they were able to tie enough back to him, but it's not that easy. And then you've got the fact that he doesn't care. I mean, he right, he doesn't care. He's calling the shots. He's getting his respect. He's got everything he could want. He's laid back. He's kicked up. Did you guys see the boozy Vlad? Uh, I don't know if you guys watch Vlad TV. It's a little off track, but I'm just going to keep it in line, right? Because I said he's laid back. There's a boozy interview on Vlad TV where he talks about uh, BG, who was a rapper from Louisiana. He's tied with Lil Wayne. And he's like – and he just got out of prison about a year ago, right? And he said, BG, day for day, real gangster shit. And he's like, you're laid back, homie. You're taken care of. And what I'm saying is that was Johnny Martinez. He didn't rat. He didn't tell. He's laid back. He's taken care of. He's did his time like a man. Um, and they were talking about that compared to another guy. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Terrence Williams was a, uh, a reported big gang member. Uh, it was Birdman's half brother. He ended up snitching on a lot of people. So Boozy in this interview, to give you an idea, was talking about the differences between a solid guy and, and, and a snitch. So, um, and I will say by all accounts, Johnny Martinez is a solid, solid dude and threw his power around and threw his weight around. So like I said, April 2022, Fed indictment comes down. Uh, the head of the indictment, the guy they're mainly going after is 46-year-old Johnny Martinez. Murder, attempted murder, extortion, everything that goes with when these gang indictments come down, right? It's the stereotypical charges that we always see. So now the boss, which is Johnny Martinez, okay, he'd been fighting in state court. Now he faces these Fed charges, right? It was a 106-page indictment named 30 other defendants. Uh, they allege, and to give you a timeline, okay, so the Fed indictment comes down in 2022, early April 2022. They says it began in 2016 and continued, like I said, all the way through 21, started into 22. The indictment alleges multiple murders, extortion, robbery, and drug trafficking. Now, there's always a hierarchy, right? Especially with the Mexican mafia. There are rules, strict rules. There's a clear leadership establishment. There's positions. It's just like a, a Fortune 500 company, right? You have bosses, leaders, underlings, workers, soldiers, everything. So Martinez was rising through the ranks, right? He starts really putting in some serious work, or like it said in 2016, I'm sure he'd put in serious work before, but they really start, he starts popping up on law enforcement's radar in 2016 he really rises to power in the 2018 death of peter ojeda who was an old old school older gentleman uh boss of the mexican mafia he died i believe he was in like his 70s um so martinez really takes over okay um he's 46 in 2022 so let's go back about six years so about that time he's about 40 um, which, you know, to have that much power, it's still pretty young. 40's not old. Uh, any of you young cats out there, all right? It's, that's not that old. I'm, I'm only about uh, seven, eight years younger than that right now. So um, it's not old at all, especially when you, you get handed that much power. Basically figure if you have a normal job and at 40 years old, you became the president of of that company's California California's base, right? Or, or a, a big district in California. So like Orange County for Johnny Martinez. That's what I'd compare it to. Let's say you worked for a big company that had 20 stores in, in Orange County, California, and you, and you ran it. That's kind of what I would compare it to. Um, just without the murders and the extortion and the drug dealing, right? <laughs> so anyway, like Ojeda, Martinez is accused of running the gang from jail and prison ordering hits on rival gangs, drug dealers in and out of custody who failed to pay taxes through various means of communications, such as like we talked about, he had smuggled in cell phones, girlfriends and wives to convey messages on the outside. I cannot convey this enough to people that don't understand this. When you are a big gang leader in the Mexican mafia, okay, he's a light skinned guy, not ugly. 
you have so much power. It is a culture. It's a way of life. And it's really hard for people to understand what this means. But when I read this stuff, it's not shocking. And it's not because, oh, I cover this for my page. It's because if you really study it, that is what it is. Girlfriends, plural. Wives, plural, right? Um, I, 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 people loved him. So literally that's what I'm talking about with my little boozy Vlad interview. He's laid up. He's kicked back. Phones, women, I'm sure they're paying off guards. I guarantee you he's he's able to have relations with girlfriends that come in. I guarantee you he's eating good. I guarantee you he's got money. I guarantee you if he's a drug user, he's got what he needs. If you know what I mean, like he's taken care of. Okay? And he's just doing his thing. And when I and when you see paying taxes, that are these street level gangs or people inside the prisons running running drugs or doing other illegal activity they have to pay a tax to the mexican mafia and if you don't pay a tax you can end up dead or they'll just wipe out your gang okay so if i'm a local dealer and i'm making 10 grand a week right off of illegal narcotic sales well two grand of that is going to go to johnny martinez's guy that comes through and collects from me every week so we make 10 grand okay we're going to take 20 to 25 percent of that off top off top. So, and again, it, it's, it, it's smarter to just go along. Um, as we'll read here, there were some people that tried to go against it and, and it didn't end up well for him. So people are coming in, relaying messages to Martinez. He's doing his thing. Um, now we're going to get into some of the guys that he had working for him. So, and what happens when you go against him? So Johnny Martinez really ratchets up the violence. All right. Around these, this 2016, 2017 is the year of like, Johnny Martinez trying to wipe people off the map. And what he did in 2017, most gang members don't do in a lifetime. Um, So acting on behalf of Martinez, a gentleman by the name of Gregory Munoz, who was in prison at the time, is accused of ordering a robbery that led to the death of 35-year-old Robert Rios. Now that's in Placenta, California uh, on January 19th, 2017. So like I said, he's kicking off 2017 with with a literal bang. The indictment alleges... Uh, Gregory Munoz grabbed Israel Jacob, Israel Jacob Cordova, Ricardo Valenzuela, and Agustin Velasquez, uh, who ended up being convicted of murder in this case in state court. They were allegedly ordered to carry out the robbery that turned deadly. A gentleman by the name of, and remember this name, Charles Frederick Coghill was also charged in state court in connection with Rio's murder. He was a key witness for the prosecution in Velasquez's trial. So these are all guys that go. And remember, like I said, Augustine Velasquez gets convicted of the murder in the state court with the help of basically a guy that turned state's evidence, a guy that became a rat, Charles Frederick Coghill. Um, Coghill, though, isn't named in this federal indictment that this, that this is what I'm talking about, right? So all these state crimes, all these crimes that are happening in California to break it down why the Fed stepped in, they're having just a really hard time convicting Johnny Martinez, okay, who they know is the head of the OC Mexican Mafia. And this is an example, the murder of, <clears throat> excuse me, the murder of 35-year-old Robert Rios. So Coke Hill, Charles Coke Hill, Drives Cordova, Velasquez, and Valenzuela to Rio's residence on the 900 block of Vista Ave. All right. State prosecutors said in Velasquez's trial, Velasquez was shot in the leg as Rio's fought back. And you see that in the video. This is where I give that guy credit. He's getting shot. Semi-automatic guns. You can see when they pull up, they come out, they wave him out. He owed money for drugs. Um, wasn't paying or Martinez didn't think he was paying. But he fights back. And I actually give him, um, I mean it. I, you know, it's like, I don't know, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, dude, if you're wrapped up with the Mexican mafia and you're not paying them, I don't know what you expect to happen. But in a way, I give him credit at least for going out on his shield. I mean, at least he went down swinging. Um, so Velasquez was shot in the leg, right? Rios is fighting back. Rios actually gets a gun somehow, shoots Velasquez in the leg. Uh, Coghill is basically their driver. He drops Velasquez off at his home where he called a friend to give him a ride to a hospital in San Diego. Munoz had a now Munoz the one that Gregory Munoz who's the one that orchestrated this whole basically go we're gonna rob Martina Johnny Martinez or and basically tells him hey this guy owes me money okay 35 year old Robert Rios in Placenta California he owes me money you guys are gonna go rob him hurt him beat him up and probably said if you kill him you kill him no big deal so 
These guys all go. It goes down. Velasquez, the guy that ends up getting convicted of this, gets shot. Coke Hill, the guy who turns state's evidence, gives him a ride to the hospital. And then Gregory Munoz, who had the direct orders from Johnny Martinez to do this crime, he ends up having a falling out with Johnny Martinez, okay? And is stripped of his shot caller status two months or three months after the January 2017 murder of Rios. The federal complaint alleges sources have said that Munoz and Martinez, they had a falling out when Johnny Martinez failed to tell Gregory Munoz his girlfriend was cheating on him. Well, when Munoz complained to Martinez, Martinez, like I said, man, you got to see how this guy's brain works, right? If anybody questions anything, it's over. Martinez felt disrespected that Munoz, they called it griping about it. So on March 28th, Martinez directs gang attacks in, because like I said, Munoz is locked up at this point. So Munoz, so Martinez and Munoz are both locked up. They're not locked up together. Munoz is in Calipatria State Prison. He gives the orders for those guys to go kill Rios or to go rob him, beat him up, probably kill him on the direct orders from Johnny Martinez. So he does this. But then a couple months later, I have this falling out because Munoz's girlfriend smashing somebody else. And he feels like Martinez needs to tell him. In that case, I'm like, no, I don't, dude. That's that's not my business. I'm You can't be mad at me. Well, Munoz does get mad at the boss. Martinez says, bet. And he puts a hit out on Munoz. In Calpatria State Prison. This all comes out in the federal indictment. All right. Meanwhile, Martinez and others in the indictment, they are on the side setting up drug deals, methamphetamine and heroin deals. But unknown to them, two of the dealers were confidential informants, according to the complaint. So in August 2017... A, a gentleman last name Martinez, not, re, not related to Johnny Martinez, Omar Mejia and Robert Martinez, right? They get, so now we're going to, right? He gets the, the, the orders come down in March, okay? We fast forward to August of 17. Now they have an opportunity. They conspire to kill Gregory Munoz, who's mad about his girl cheating on him. By this point, Munoz is out of custody. He gets out of Calipatria State Prison, all right? <clears throat> so, the indictment alleges Robert Martinez, Frank Mosqueda, they attack Munoz with Mosqueda shooting Munoz multiple times in the back. But Gregory Munoz somehow survives. Okay? Then on August 20, 2017, <laughs> Martinez doesn't miss a beat. So he has Munoz attacked in prison. Then he has him attacked on the streets of six, seven months apart. Munoz survives both. And then as he's doing... As Martinez is putting the orders on Munoz, he puts another order, August 20, 2017. He orders the killing of Richard Vieta, who he says stole money and drugs from defendant Martinez, the other Martinez in this, who was ordered part of the trying to kill Munoz, who's mad about his girlfriend. The indictment, this is the Fed indictment, alleges Vieta was shot to death just after midnight. August 21st, 2017, in the inner block of East Culver Avenue. Defendants Kevin Trejo, James Mendez, and Mike Espadar, Escobar lured the victim into a vehicle with es- Escobar behind the wheel, the indictment legends. The indictment also details confrontations with a tire shop owner okay, for dealing drugs out of the business without permission and running protection rackets for marijuana dispensaries. This is all in 2017, guys. Defendant Robert Aguirre was accused of greenlighting one unnamed man for an attack. And now we go to October 2017. The victim was shot as he ran from gang members October 24th, 2017. The indictment alleges that on one occasion in November of 17, another gentleman under the behest of, Mar- of Johnny Martinez, defendant Luis Alberto Vasquez, right? And Vasquez, they handed over. Okay, let me get this right. Defendant Luis Alberto, they had the guy, the tire shop owner, okay, for dealing drugs out of the business without permission. A gentleman who's working at the behest of Martinez, that tire shop owner hands over $1,600 in street taxes, okay? Now, Luis, I'm trying to say this right, Luis Alberto and that Martinez gentleman, okay, They presided over the transaction from a smuggle. Okay, excuse me, guys. I'm sorry about this. 
They get handed over the street taxes from local gang members to Martinez. All right. Martinez is the one that participated in the Gregory Munoz attempted murder. He also presided over the transaction to, from smuggled in cell phones. That same month in October of 2017, Martinez and defendant Dennis Ortiz arranged to smuggle in contraband cell phones into Salinas Valley State Prison. This is crazy. Each one of those cell phones was sold for $1,000 a piece in the indictment. Okay, on December, tw- on December 1st, 2017, a Theo Lacey jail inmate. So I'm just reading you guys off. This is all in the Fed indictment. These are all examples of people being attacked. Some of these people, you're, you'll rehear their names in multiple times. But a lot of these, these are all just members of these gangs that Johnny Martinez has control of. Or Mexican mafia members that were in jail and got out. Um, in the case of in the case of Munoz, he gets attacked in Calpatria State Prison, then gets shot after he's back out on the street in August of seventeen. It, it's just crazy. Some of these guys survive, some of these guys are killed. Um, but I remember, everything I'm reading is at the behest of Johnny Martinez. Okay, he's just throwing his weight around. So, December first, twenty seventeen, a Theo Lacey jail inmate was slashed at the direction of the gang. The indictment alleges that same month. A gang member with the last name Ortiz allegedly ordered another man be killed for warning gang members of violations that were pending against him, the indictment alleges. So Ortiz, at the behest of Johnny Martinez, alleged to have another man killed. We go to another Mexican mafia attack, this time on Christmas Day 2017. And I put his picture up there. He's a gentleman by the last name Cooper. His first name is Michael Cooper. To me, he looks white. Um... But it says he's a member. It says he's uh, a, a member. So on Christmas Day 2017, it was another Mexican mafia directed attack was carried out on Christmas Day 2017. And then the indictment alleges on New Year's Day 2018, Martinez Mejia allegedly, now this is Johnny Martinez and another defendant with the last name Mejia, allegedly used the Signal app to discuss killing another defendant, Michael Cooper, while in custody at Calpatria State Prison. The indictment alleges Cooper's sin, in quotes, was ordering an attack on another gang member. That's why I'm like, it says on another gang member, so that would imply that Michael Cooper was a a, a gang member. And so... Maybe comment down below. Uh, I put his picture up. He just looks like a white guy. I didn't know uh, that part. I'm a little, I do get a little confused with. I don't know if he's an actual full-fledged member, or maybe an associate, but the way it words it, it's another gang member. It's so like a fellow gang member. So Cooperson was ordering an attack on another gang member that wasn't authorized by Johnny Martinez and for Anne for being suspected of causing a police raid against the gang. So, that's like a double double whammy. Um, attacks a gang member without the permission of Johnny Martinez. And he's also suspected of causing a police raid against the gang. Cooper was attacked with shivs. Now we go to the beginning of 18. right? So all that, all that stuff I read you happens in 17. Michael Cooper was attacked with shivs on January 5th, 2018. But he survived the assault according to the indictment. The other member, Robert Martinez, not the one with... Not he's, he's the one that's been involved in a few of these attacks. He's not related to Johnny Martinez. They just have the same last name. Robert Martinez, along with defendants Robert um, Amazuka and Mir Darbignan, a.k.a. Hollywood Mike, they attempted to kill Michael Cooper again, stabbing him in the face and the neck area in a separate attack. <laughs> just crazy. And then we go back to the Theo Lacey uh, jail. Another inmate had his throat slit and was stomped on July 29th, 2020 at the behest, again, of Johnny Martinez for threatening to discuss the Mexican mafia with law enforcement. Now, this to me, okay, some of these guys I feel, I mean, I don't feel bad really for anybody, but there are some of these things that happen that I'm like, man, you know, like the tire shop owner with the street tax, you know, um, they're threatening him, beating him up. You know, it's just like, okay, man, was he really not paying you or was he trying to work something out? Were you trying to take a lot of his money? You know, you just don't really know. Um, So I kind of have a heart for some of that stuff. But this, I'm like, okay, I don't know what this gentleman expected to have happen to him. It says that he threatened to discuss the Mexican mafia with law enforcement. I'm like, okay, dude, you're going to die. You're you're basically going to die. The indictment alleges. The attempt, now this is crazy, right? So 
All of this happens over the case of a four or five year period. The attempts, though, by Orange County District Attorney's Office prosecutors to make cases against Johnny Martinez and all the people he had working for him, and, the, and especially, and it sounded like the real focus was that Robert Rios murder, especially because that one's caught on camera and you see just the depths of that. So a lot of these, I hate to say it, they're jail attacks, they're stomp outs, they're stabbings, people aren't dying. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of, I know for a fact that's looked at differently. Um, let me know what you think down below, but I, I think a lot of you would agree with me that these jail attacks, gang on gang members, it's just not the same as this Robert Rios where it's on camera. Even if Robert Rios was involved in things, which obviously he was, okay, because apparently he was stealing money, possibly drugs, owed money, but still, you roll up to another man's house, you pull guns on him, he might have family in there, you know, it, it's just a different level of violence that, um, and it's in the public, it's in the street, people are seeing that, people are going, hey, uh, city leaders, how are you letting this happen, what are you going to do about this? So anyway, uh, they're trying to make these charges stick. Right, They try to get him for the Robert Rios murder, the attempted murder of, of Munoz, who was in good favor. Then he fell out of favor because he was mad about his, his girl <laughs> cheating on him all over a damn girl. Um, they were always having issues trying to get these guys. They would charge him. Prosecutors went to a grand jury for an indictment in 18, but it was thrown out for procedural errors in the presentation of evidence. So whatever that means... Um, the defendants were charged again and were ordered to stand trial following a preliminary hearing, but Orange County Superior Court Judge Patrick Donahue granted a motion preventing prosecutors from mentioning Johnny Martinez or the conspiracy to order the hit on Rios because the judge determined that a gang expert from the Orange County Sheriff's Department lied about his training as part of a wide-ranging evidence booking scandal in the department. So... God, it's like no wonder the feds had to step in. And if any of you know, right, about law enforcement, usually local and federal authorities, there's a little bit of a, 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 a chest bump in contest, right? Because ultimately when the feds come in, they have final say. The feds have control. And if the feds want to come in and take over your case as a local cop, the feds can come in and take over your case as a local cop. And – you know when the feds show up, they're looking at these mess ups, these evidence mess ups. This – the guy lied about his training as part of a wide-ranging evidence booking scandal. No wonder people don't trust the police, especially in California, especially if you're a person of color. You are screwed. So later, Donahue threw out the murder case against Martinez for lack of evidence. And defense attorneys have been seeking similar motions in the Rios case. My God. So with those cases faltering, the first indication that the U.S. Attorney's Office is going to step into the fray was happening, now we go back to April 4th, when county prosecutors moved to dismiss an attempted murder case against um, some of these defendants, knowing, knowing that the feds were going to come in. So with that last one, when some of these cases get dismissed, it's because the feds are going to come in with a super, they call it a superseding indictment, and they're going to get them. So that's where we're at with it. No updates as of now. Usually when the feds come in on the racketeering case, it's all wrapped. It's all over. They got them on cell phones. They got witnesses. Even though, like I said, a lot of people are too afraid. All it takes is a couple. That's a wrap. Um, Johnny Crow Martinez, uh, a, a true boss. You can see the influence he had on a lot of these people. To be honest, trying to trying to read – this story took me like three days uh, to try to put together. I apologize about one of the pauses. It's because there's so much information and kind of – some of it is just – some of it contradicts itself. So I'm trying to really read. So you kind of have to read between the lines. Of, and I tried to just put this story together as best I could with a timeline. That's why I started when I did. And I tried to focus on 2017. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate all the love. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And until next time, peace.